Welcome back to another Linux Gamecast Weekly, the show that covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how-tos, and most importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with. This week, well, I should say, coming up tonight, take a shot. Every time, maybe someone, I don't know, a particular person, says the word proton, just gives it a mention. And, uh... Yeah, don't do that. You'll probably die of alcohol poisoning. <laughs> but we are also going to be checking uh, game compati compatibility. English, man, I'm butchering this with SPCS because I got a new Chrome plugin, and that is really neat. Valve wants to smooth some things over with VR, not with their customers or their sellers. And ever want to put wine in a container that isn't a bottle? Well, it isn't quite a snap. Proton rebases itself. Take that shot. And we debase ourselves with glorious heresy. And Discord brings out a beta. It's not for Linux, but it will certainly shake things up. Shake Ladies and gentlemen, drop. boys and girls, I'm Old Man Van, you know me. <laughs> um, every week, joined by our tame Canadian podcaster, that is one Jordan's Feng. Look at him. Wow. He's glorious. And the man on the island, the Hello. Brexican himself, um, one Pedro <laughs> Mateus. Joined every week live with you at home, helping us form the most important bit known as Cocaine Voltron. Before we get started, would you like to see what's going on in each other's life organs? Apparently, we've not done anything, gentlemen. I've accomplished no. nothing of value. I've been playing I've been playing Pathfinder all week. You're full of and lies. You've discovered that your new AMD laptop is very hot. It is. It is. And oh, you're right. That that's what I was gonna say. For the lovely, lovely people. I figured out the issue with the lid closing, and that solution is to install XFCE and stop using GNOME. <laughs> XFCE, is there anything it can fix? <laughs> uh multi monitor support. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, on my end, we went to go see a place today. It was a nice place, but it was tiny and it was stupid expensive. It's like 975 pounds a month. And yeah, no, that's that's a bit much for its size because it, you know, for like a one bedroom, two floor house thingy, I would be willing to pay like 800, but... 900 and almost a thousand pounds a month really no that's, that's, that's that uk price man UK hey man <laughs> it's all about the benjamins look at the bright side at least somebody gave you a look i mean wouldn't it be elizabeth's in the uk it's all about the elizabeth's or the george's yeah i don't yeah. i don't know who's on the UK. i don't know who's on the pound note oh. it's queen elizabeth <laughs> all right there you go it's all about the lizzie's <laughs> you're not you're not doing a very good job at canadianing there jordan <laughs> well well excuse me my 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 50 dollars bill has sir um sir robert borden on it so it should be sir mix a lot uh hey over here i discovered that uh, i i am infested with fiber all around my house and i understand what a new new breed of special hell is this is not we talked about it earlier but what's worse like if i lived out and like fuck you nowhere and i could only get maybe like satellite internet like, ah, fiber's never going to come out. That's never going to be a thing. That's bad, but you you know what you're in for. You're like, fuck it. I'm, it's never going to happen. I'm in the position to where this shit is in front of my house, backyard, you name it. So it's anywhere between like 30 days before they light it up or a year and a half. Mm, or ever. Or ever, or ever, possible, yeah. possible yeah, third contender yeah. in that one. I mean, I mean, they do, they do have a nasty habit of like digging the trenches, laying the fiber, and then just leaving it dark for about two decades. Oh, I don't know, man. It's painful, but I, I'll make it through, man. It doesn't hurt as much as the horse. Yeah, the horse, the horse has taken an extra big beating because apparently the developers and the users are not too happy with its produce. It's the Steam Linux. Stop day. Get ready Dang. to start drinking, folks. Proton, yes. So, uh, version 316, the Proton betas, is now available. And the biggest difference here is that they rebased Proton uh, from Wine 3.7 to Wine 3.16, which is a significant jump, especially when it comes to games that also rely on external launchers, such as Uplay. 
I'm talking about your South Parks, your crews, your Assassin's Creeds. Yes, now you can play them with Proton. Uh, they also released a couple of hot fixes, uh, 3.16.1, 3.16.2, and 3.16.3 in very quick succession. Uh, apparently, with 3.16.1 and 2, they still had... Um, they ran into the exact same issue that they ran when they first released Proton, as in they were outputting debug builds instead of, you know, re release builds with all the debug stuff disabled. And that was affecting performance a little bit, and they did it again with 3.16. But they've since disabled that again. And, uh, yeah, it's uh, performance is actually considerably better in some titles. Others, not so much. <laughs> well, I definitely got to throw it in the direction that, you know, two updates this week. You know, we started with uh, Dash 2, now we're at Dash mm -hmm. 3. Uh, one thing I do want to say, I know people with, like, the... 10x series and video cards are like it's running fine but with like the old crusty 980 that i have <laughs> wow wow poor old van van um shadow warrior which was free that's the only reason i have a copy it wasn't a heretic purchase uh god gave it away and it was mostly playable uh but until you got into the hub when you got into the hub where you it just ate dicks constantly it was <laughs> bad but once you get into the levels, I mean, it was like 70% playable. But if you have the Vulcan beta drivers for NVIDIA, with the one with the dot oh nine or whatever it is mm -hmm. right now, with this latest uh, 316, it's brilliant, 100%. I mean, it's not nice. quite playing like Doom was. You know, <laughs> Doom, I think, is like our gold standard, right, guys? Well, yeah. uh, Do Do Doom also is like native Vulcan, right? And mm -hmm. as, as as minimal fuckery as possible. I do like that they're trying to fix a bunch of the alt tab issues, seemingly the ones that pop up in Unreal Engine One games. I would like to be able to alt tab out of Doom eventually. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> that could be fun. Uh, moving on, SPCR. We've talked about this in the past, mm -hmm. but I wanted to give this a mention because uh, there was a Firefox. That's what we talked about, that they added the mm -hmm. Firefox plugin. Now there's one for Chrome. Like, what is this? I've never heard of it. When you go to Steam with this business hooked up, built in, it will give you the rating directly from SPCR, which is kind of the business if you're looking for um, yeah. compatibility with your filthy, horrible, nasty <laughs> Windows games. Uh, <laughs> that was kind of neat. It's like, hey, that's Yeah, it took him a while. Yeah. Yeah, the, the the I think the one we covered originally was like it was a mod for the actual Steam client that um Well the one we covered originally was the Firefox plugin. Yeah, it was oh, the Firefox was plugin. Yeah. I thought yeah. I, I thought I thought there was one. You've for, smoked like, yourself it, retarded. It, 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 it's it's very possible. <laughs> it, it is. But um yeah, so now now you can uh, see if you want to make heretic purchases if you'll be able to actually play those games with Steam Play. Yep. So Good far. news, everyone. Flip it. Yeah. <laughs> So, uh, Flibbit, previously funded pretty much exclusively through Patreon and Indie Devs, uh, has now started to work on uh, Proton in an official capacity. Um, I guess uh, either Codeweavers is contracting him or has outright hired him, and now they're, uh, he's working on F-Audio integration. Uh, you might remember he was talking about that before we were talking about a blog post that he did a while ago where they were trying to um, implement some F-Audio stuff in Wine so that they could rebuild it in uh, natively in FNA. So... Um, they, so in short, they need his audio brains and it basically confirms the whole valve is basically trying to do react os 2.0 with, uh, proton <laughs> and so, well, I mean, man, I mean, he does say like, uh, right now F audio is the only active project. The rest depends on what proton users need after that and mm -hmm. what the team needs me to do. Wine mono is high on the list. That'd be nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Wine Mono actually replacing the mono integration with, you know, FNA, that would be kind of awesome. Mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> yeah no so it's 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 good to see that uh they're they're trying to pull in some top talent and some good brains to hash out some of these problems i don't know okay, man. <laughs> my, my first thought was like no you were the chosen one you were to port <laughs> linux games not help when no right <laughs> yeah but but then they also probably like literally showed up to his house with a briefcase full of money <laughs> it's like this is yours if you you know get f audio you, to work with proton you 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 get one of those every week if you get <laughs> f audio to work for proton one of i i don't know with um valve doing like it really feels like they are definitely i uh they fucked us before. well they, they didn't fuck us but i mean it's valve it really feels like they're in get shit done mode again with linux mm -hmm. you know when we see mm -hmm. shit like this well, and, well and they, they didn't they, get a lot of shit from the community when uh, 
Pierre Loup Griffet said that eh, Linux users need to buy more games and the community went, well, we would like to buy more games if the ones coming out were an ass. <laughs> or though, no, or there was rather, rather, rather like, we, could, we could actually play the games and now this, this yeah. their witty, witty, witty retort is, hey, here's, here's, here's now some Now you can play like, the games. games. Hey, yeah. listen, um, kind of as an aside, I'm just going to put this out there. Cuphead came out on Mac today. Mm -hmm. Good time to start bugging them about that Linux version. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> all right. Smooth moves. So this is uh, this is a thing from the Steam community VR uh, or Steam VR section. You can find links to all this in our show notes. Now, um, Steam VR has motion smoothing. So now it uses fancy artificial intelligence to predict um, in between frames if it if uh, Steam VR detects that a game is not going to make frame rate. And their thoughts here are that um, this. Is uh, this has a twofold benefit. Number one, it allows uh, weaker systems to run VR games because uh, you're not rendering as many frames as you would necessarily need to. And number two, on higher end systems, you've just opened up a ton of overhead that you can use to push richer content. Um, at the moment, this only works on uh, Windows 10 with NVIDIA graphics, uh, but we're probably going to see this eventually come to Linux in 2035. Is our best guess? Yeah, I don't know, man. Maybe you've been a little optimistic on that. Uh, it, it's not ready. I mean, 12 people have VR. Oh, okay. Good on you, Valve. I'm glad to see that you're continuing doing this. I saw a thing in the R Vive on the Reddits, and it was just a picture of somebody in an arm brace. It was like, so I got my wireless headset in today. <laughs> and then went to the emergency room. I was like, oh, do tell, girlfriend. I had to click on read the story. And she's like, yeah, apparently uh, some dumbass decided to show off their um, handstanding skills in some VR chat thing without possessing said handstanding skills. And. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, that, 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 was, that was the thing when I was playing Gorn at my friend's house is that my friend literally had to restrain me because I had, <laughs> at some point had left the bounds of the VR thing was I was about to punch a hole through his television. <laughs> so, like, may, maybe you need a tether or something just to keep you in the area because, like, mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. intense games, like, especially with stuff like Super Hot or Gorn, right. where you, you end up, like, doing the fucking uh, exorcist spider walk to, like, get through stuff. <laughs> And yeah, you you will eventually just knock into shit in, in meat space. Yeah. yeah, though the way that they're doing the uh, like the frame smoothing uh, for VR, not entirely sure how uh, good it's going to look. Because yes, predictions all very well and good, but if the game is literally rendering at forty five frames a second, you're going to have to predict half of the entire frames per second. That's 45 frames of guesswork. Yeah, but I mean, come on. I mean, if you're trying to run this on like some wicked budget system, you're... Uh, yes, Do I you know. have I other listen, problems at no, that like, point? So, so I, I, like the, I, I'm, I'm, I'm a talking now. Um, <laughs> people are going to bitch. I know they're going to bitch. They're like, how come my $75 GTX... Four whatever isn't running this and it, it looks weird but i have a vr set hooked up to it somehow for some fucking reason well and and that's that's the thing like like that that's that's the gut reaction for sure but i think this is more like this is more along the lines of as as vr is going to get a lot more complicated uh you'll be able to still play vr games on that crusty old 980 in the next couple of years as opposed to, oh, well, I have a GTX 920. Why can't I run VR on this? Dude, I, man, I thought, like, okay, the 980, I'm just going to turn you into a video encoder. Then they're like, oh, the 20 series can encode just as good as, like, fast as regular in H.264. It's like, motherfucker, now I want one. <laughs> God damn it. Fuck you, NVIDIA. <laughs> well, fire. the stock on those is piling up, so the, pre the prices may drop sooner than expected. I don't know. All right, uh, let's gossip. Oh, yes. Oh, Let's go send because Polygon put out an article, as they're off to do, and this one's an opinion piece uh, where uh, one of the writers went to developers and asked them for their opinion about Valve and how they do, basically. It's uh, how they handle complaints, how they handle just about everything that a developer may have an issue with. Kind of like, all right, I, I gotta jump in, because they're like, we're not gonna tell you what developers, like, by the way, here's a nice up-close uh, shot of... <laughs> one or, of the games, at yeah, least. Yeah. Uh, make it that uh, what you will. 
But yeah, now basically they got in touch with a bunch of developers. Some of them dropped their names, others refused to because they were super scared of uh, Valve, you know, just dropping them. And they say, well, well, there's a lot of overlap in their stories, but it's uh, it's mostly down to complaints about yeah, Valve is taking our money and it's really not doing anything to justify that. Yeah, they host the store and the repositories, but. That's it. That's where it well, ends. <laughs> and and like they they break it down, and there there's there seems to be a couple common complaints here. Number one, people there's no like really good feedback system for developers aside from reviews. So people mm-hmm. would start like putting bug reports in reviews, and um, they they'd be banking on the fact that um, if you have negative reviews, your game doesn't get promoted as much. So oh mm-hmm. no, well now we have to pay attention to me. So it becomes this sort of bug tracker slash blackmail engine. Mm-hmm. Um. Steam actually straight up needs a better technical feedback reporting system, especially for like, oh, well, someone reports this issue, this issue. Okay, well, what's their specs? Valve has access to this information, so it would be nice to provide this to the developer so that they can, you know, start working on a solution. Uh, the existing methods between communicating with customers are insufficient and require extra manpower because there's the support forums. The support forums don't do like email alerts and shit. And there's no like API or something to like import these into a ticketing system. Um, the 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 big fuck you was that the uh, automated region based pricing will fuck your per game revenue by about thirty to sixty percent. And mm-hmm. you can you can you can manually set uh, you can manually set prices for um, every single country that uh, Steam is available in. The problem is that now you have to basically keep an eye on all the fucking exchange rates and make sure yeah. that your game is priced accordingly. Because if you um, yeah, because as, as I mentioned, if you or as the article mentioned, if uh, you just leave it up to Valve, it can cut your revenue by about thirty to sixty percent. And really, the the overarching thing is that unless you're like uh, like an Activision or an EA or someone that's or an Epic or someone's going to make a bunch of money with your game, and therefore Valve is going to make a bunch of money, they don't really care about you. And mm-hmm. Oh, oh, and we, we, we've, ta- we've talked at length about how this ha- a lot of this has to do with the fact that Valve wants to be as hands-off as possible. It's like, oh, we're giving power to the developers, and we're giving power to the players, and we're creating a bunch of tools that provide 50% of the functionality that are required, and then leave you, you know, trying to grasp for that other 50% and spending a lot of time and manpower in the process. And Yeah, and it's, 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 it's you know, for a company that this... Uh, decided to, you know, specifically call out trolling when it came to games on their store, they don't seem to be extending that to the other areas, like, you know, a developer interaction, or players not being able to leave trolling reviews just for the sake of dicking a game over. And the moment that people get wind of this, massive swaths of negative reviews will bury a game because someone didn't like the developer and they have access to a bot farm that that can just drop all the negative reviews so no, uh, yeah. not, not, not not only that and like just it's it seems like the the culture of fear surrounding steam where you have developers who are unwilling to you know speak out because oh mm-hmm. we're afraid that valve is just going to delist our game because they disagree with it disagree with us it doesn't seem like it's very healthy and i guess we're going to talk about some of the alternatives in the news section yeah a couple of things with this uh just reading through the article starting off they kind of make the point definitely is valve worth it now for that 30 percent cut because they go back in the old days if you could get your game on steam that's the fucking money train i mean you did it good Nowadays, I mean, really, what do you get? You don't get support. You get automated bullshit. And is it really worth the 30%? That's why I kind of threw this in here. We're going to be talking about it later on in the show with like discords going, hey, you know what? It wouldn't really take a lot to be better than Valve at this point right now. No. Valve Valve has grown old and stagnant. Stagnant. (laughs) <laughs> and it is laughable with them trying to like do no. We just got done <laughs> sucking all the dick with Valve. We're like Proton's great and all that. And, but I mean, for their shortcomings, like when they've just jacked up with the like chat system, they're like, look, we can do that too. Discord mm-hmm. and everyone went, that's cute. Discord's already at your lunch on that. The regional mm-hmm. pricing thing was interesting because one developer talked about losing a deal with like a South American. Uh, publisher or company retailer because they're like hey yeah we could sell your game but it's available on steam in this country for effectively nothing and they're like wait what uh 
And the only way to keep that updated is if you personally go in and figure out what the exchange rates are, like daily. So you do that or you use their automated system that will just price it at fuck all whatever it feels like. Mm -hmm. Um, Kind of interesting. And Jordan, you had a very good point with people using bug reports, uh, you know, negative reviews for bug reports. I'm like, man, I left your bad review because uh, it doesn't go full screen correctly. And I have 0.00 nanoseconds in the game. And, but it is also important because I, I read one of the developers talking. I was like, wait a minute. Cause he's like, uh, you know, people should like contact us through the forums and stuff like that. How many times have we seen bug reports go completely fucking ignored in the forums though? I filed bugs or bug reports that just get completely fucking ignored. Right. Well, yeah, yeah I use Lutris too. Um, <laughs> yeah, I oh, I used to. Oh, oh. <laughs> I used to have to rely on AMD drivers on Linux, and FGLRX was not good. Mm. It really was not good. <laughs> All right, that's the uh, developer's fault. Let's mm. build a bridge. <laughs> Yes. All right. So Bridge Constructor uh, Portal, they have uh, released version 4.0. This was the uh, this was the cynical force crossover that happened to be an actually pretty decent puzzle game. Uh, they get a, they got a brand new level editor. Uh, this comes with a little addendum, though, in the sense that they had to rework a lot of uh, physics and engine stuff that required adjustments in some of their own levels. So some of the community created levels may need some retweaking. So you, if you've been making levels for a bridge constructor portal, you might want to recheck your shit uh, just because mm-hmm. some things may have broken in the update. Hmm. Yep. Yeah. That is 100% it. It is. Uh, I enjoyed the game. I mean, I am not yeah, a huge yeah. fan of, bridge constructing but i mean it was probably what it's still 9.99 yeah and yeah i mean it's bridge constructor with portals but fuck it i mean it, it's it got its own sense of humor to it and it's well done uh, but i, I yeah. was it was kind of amusing like in order to make your own levels we kind of had to go back and fix some physics things and older levels <laughs> deal with it <laughs> Mm. Yeah, rebalances are always bound to break something. But hey, it's Bridge Constructor Portal. As far as a uh, you know, an offshoot game, actually getting everything right when it comes to their source material, they did a good job. Very good yeah. job. <laughs> it felt it felt super cynical. I, re- I remember being like, yeah. "What the fuck is this shit?" And then I played. It's like, okay, someone actually put some time and effort into this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, speaking speaking of third party levels. Rocket League has uh, has a thing. It is mm-hmm. the Yoshi circuit from a Mario Kart. Uh, but if you if you if you're if you're if you're hoping to play this with your friends under Linux, too fucking bad. You need you can you can wah, download wah. the uh, you can subscribe to it and play it uh, on single player. But if you want to play it on multiplayer, you need to use something called Rocket Launcher, and you need to set up a VPN so that you set up a local network game so that you don't fuck around with Psyonix's official servers because they'll get mad mm-hmm. at you and ban your account. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, but I, uh, this is neat. I mean, Nintendo is going to take it down in like 20, 20 nanoseconds, <laughs> so get out there and grab it. But... Mm-hmm. Uh, did you try to, did you get it set up or, uh, no, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't screw around with this. Um, no, it's like the moment, oh, you need to download rocket launcher. That's windows only, isn't it? Yes, it is. Oh yeah. That, that, <laughs> that, 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 for, that was almost literally verbatim. My reaction to it was just like, <laughs> oh, okay. What do I need to do? This was like, what, what rocket launcher? Does that have a Linux version? No, it requires .NET, whatever. Yeah. Fuck this. Hey man, mm-hmm. proton. Come on. Or maybe maybe it'll work in one, but I can't. Yeah, but ve- but then I can't. It. I can't select Proton for games that have a native client. Ah. Or they, that's why I, why I was go, what I, why I was going to say that they could easily add it as a mod, a separate game, quote unquote, on Steam as a mod for just Rocket Launcher, and then you could just try and get that working with the Protons. Well, you could, but or that they would could just make it a regular workshop something. item. <laughs> well, I, 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 th- I think I think the issue here is like custom uh, custom multiplayer arenas. I don't yeah. know. Yeah, I, I was thinking like, hey, Cynosis, uh like talk to these guys and do it. Talk with Nintendo, and Nintendo's like, sure you can, only on the Switch. <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah. yeah. <laughs> anyway, so I was, it, sounds- it was interesting, but not as le- interesting as this bullshit. <laughs> le, 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 mar- le marche d'étoiles, le pied d'étoiles, <laughs> and 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 the, the four aliens. Stars? <laughs> yeah. The, well, yeah. The 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 walking of the stars. Anyways, um, I, I don't I don't know. There's is it Strider? Correct me. Is there like a proper French word for trek, or is it just the walking? Anyways, this is this is a fr- this is a weird little anomaly on Steam. It is a free to play Star Trek game. Apparently, it's official. Available only in French, um, mm-hmm. and you apparently you gotta you're you're fighting species eight four seven two. They're invading the 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 alpha or the beta quadrant or something. You, you gotta you gotta build your spaceships. That kind of looks a little Starcrafty, to be perfectly honest. If we're looking at the trailer, um, but then it kind of turned into space Final Fantasy. I don't know. Then you tried to actually play this game. I don't know. Minimum requirement is the operating. Technically correct, Kernel 241, while it, it recommends Kernel 3.0. It'll run on CentOS 5. It'll run on fucking 40 megs of RAM, son. <laughs> yeah, that's the bit. It's like, really? 40 megs of RAM? Really? <laughs> I downloaded it. Because um, in the back, I was like, you took two years of French. I was like, I know. I, I'm going to do this for the people. I'm, I'm going to take one for the team and see if I can get through it download it's like wicked small i was like this is too small it was one of those like this is going to download some shit you know after you mm-hmm. get like this is a launcher it takes you to the most sketchiest fucking login with your steam account type fucking web page of like fuck that nope <laughs> that that was my experience with the star trek but i don't know man i, I so it's it, just it a just browser been... game that's been bundled up and put on steam just like jackbox <laughs> wah wah <laughs> all right let, let, let's uh, talk let, let's get glad indeed so gladiobots ai combat arena and um well jordan mentioned in the notes that it's a bit like gratuitous space battles i would say that it's uh if gratuitous space battles let you set the per ship ai with all of the uh, customization options that like you'd get in um dragon age origins that is what this game is trying to be it's like you can set like a uh, perfect example right there you can set like conditions and what Bot the killer, robots name do it correctly it should be cock smasher <laughs> <laughs> and yeah no it's uh actually this very much interests me like when we threw chairs at um airship combat gunship combat that one. Oh, that yeah, you, that, that is. yeah. And it's like, give me an option to play like, you know, gratuitous space battles where I just set the things and then I watch the AI completely fuck it up. I like that. I like that a lot. So uh, this one I might actually pick up once it's out of early access because, yeah, it's... Uh, I don't know about that, man. I mean, this is fourteen ninety nine for early access yeah. and there's already DLC called the Optimization Pack. Well, so so what the Optimization Pack is, is normally you have to like go through the campaign or whatever to unlock um, like routines and parts and different bot models. You can just... They're, they're, say, they're saying right out, like, this is just to give us extra money. We'll just we'll just give you the points to unlock everything. Right. Um, and I also got to go back and look. I mean, this thing apparently has a Steam repo, not a Steam, but a Linux repo, and that's why I threw it in the notes. I'm like, ah, that's the thing. But fourteen ninety nine. Here's my problem with having that and the DLC is because this is a fucking free to play game on the Play Store. Yeah. Oh, it's an app. Run. Um, <laughs> it's an app that I think I contains might try it on the in-app products. Uh, yeah, purchases from ninety nine cents <laughs> to twenty two ninety nine, which also makes me wonder because it's like, hey, it's cross platform multiplayer and all that. How does that work? If because usually when you buy like the full price version, which I was assuming mm-hmm. was fourteen ninety nine, until I saw the mm-hmm. DLC on top of that, <laughs> so that should be the ultra mega chicken fuck you version. How does that dance against somebody on the mobile version that is like, give me money to win? Now, that that could be cross-platform multiplayer as in like Windows, Mac, Linux uh, cross-platform multiplayer. And mm-hmm. Android is kind of in its own. Android, iOS is still in its own little bucket. I don't know. I mean, Although I don't see why that would be a thing because it, they can actually balance it out with like a point system. 
you could easily balance what you can get with the points to have positives and negatives. So yeah, even though you have access to the late game ones, you probably don't have any significant advantages over so, so, someone who so. starts out with the generic bots. So 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 what like a Warhammer thing where like oh well, you can you can set this up and you have five hundred points worth of like yeah. stuff to spend and yeah I, I, I could I could maybe see that mm. yeah um yeah what, what, the the mo- mobile PC cross platform is kind of interesting in terms of like a multiplayer dynamic so, since I, I controls know. are not an uh, an issue here yep. yeah no yep. this could totally work as a mobile and PC uh, cross platform mm-hmm. but not but not PlayStation. No, nope. that's not true. <laughs> better story than Fortnite. <laughs> um, hey, man, we've covered a lot of Milkstone Studio stuff uh, over the mm-hmm. years. Uh, and they were like, hey, we got a new game, guys. Why don't you go take a look at it? Here's some. I think they actually managed to send us three keys. On yes, Steam. yes, they did. <laughs> Correctly. That. I mean. I think it, yeah, they're, they're among the first. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like. Uh, maybe three, four developers have like went to our curator thing on Steam mm-hmm. and provided three copies. Now, Artifacts Monday, you got close friends. You sent two. <laughs> two. <laughs> two. <laughs> but what are we talking about? We're talking about farm together, man. Grow your own. Oh, man. It could be a different time about grow farm in Canada. Um, yeah, buddy. Grow your own farm all by yourself and cooperate with your friends in this unique, relaxing farming experience. We're going to turn this into a murder simulator, kids. Because it is multiplayer. Online multiplayer co-op. We're going to prove that shit wrong. Online co-op double. So it's out. You can play it. Uh, I went to just casually give it a spin i was like all right let, 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 let's see what this is about just curiosity plus i was waiting for somebody in discord to be like what the fuck are you doing playing farm together then and <laughs> no one did <laughs> shame on all of you uh anyway launched it Epile- epilepsy simulator yeah. like 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 whoa all right that's what i would make if i was legitimately trying to trigger somebody's epilepsy um <laughs> Closed it, went to the forums, and I was like, oh, no, uh, it's an issue with the latest version of Unity. It's not our fault. All you have to do is enable screen, full screen, one screen with uh, 34 or whatever, Force GL, Core 42 Force Clamp, and it launches right up, guys. I mean, (laughs) there's nothing we can do about that. It's all Unity's fault. So it's just like, you know, we're we're going to fucking run it. Um, I, I, I probably have like 200 games using the latest version of unity i'm ballparking and lowballing <laughs> and that ain't no damn fix son um yeah to be fair you don't need those many flags you just need the full screen one and the forced gl uh core 42 mm-hmm. that's the ones you need because the moment you get in game it goes oh i'm just going to render at 640 by 480 anyway and then you can go to the options and set it to whatever it and then right. it will remember right. yeah <laughs> Mm-hmm. Uh, so I, I, you could I just, just have did not those like two. the like official developer response in the forums. I'm like, no, this this is a fix. We can't do anything about. It. I'm like, go oh, fuck off. Um, yeah, come on. But you know, major graphic snafu aside, uh, this from what I played at the game, it mm-hmm. actually could very well become like 3D Farmville because it has that exact same appeal. Very simple controls. You move around and you click to do things. That's it. That's Far- Far- Farmville or like Harvest Moon. Yes, Farmville. There's uh, at least farm. right at the be- <laughs> right at the beginning. There's really nothing to it. It's just Farmville. You just click on things to water them or to plant them or to do mm. whatever. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, as the people, these are the same people who made Ziggurat. So I know they have the chops to fix it. So they need to fix it. Now here, here, here's the question: Do you get the crossover with Farm and Ziggurat, where like the wizard shows up and starts like shooting lightning at your cows? <laughs> I want, I want that DLC. I can just imagine, though. I mean, this is Milkstone. They've they've done a couple of interesting games over the year, and they've uh, mm-hmm. years, I should say, yeah. and they've had Linux support, some better than others. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, little, uh, little racist street was pretty good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, didn't they do I, a I, coffin dodgers? That's that was pretty uh, fun. I, I thought no, they that did wasn't coffin them. dodgers. That wasn't them? No, uh, they, no. They, did, they did. They did. Oh, that they was did milky both, tea. Uh, white that noise. was milky tea. Yeah. I did that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they they did both of the white noises and uh, yes. one called. I can just uh, imagine like 
somebody at the studio was like, all right, let's, let's see what the most fucked up pl- implausible situation this game is capable of. Give it to those guys. Yeah. Cause that's what's going to happen. You know, that's what's going to fucking happen. <laughs> if somebody told you something other than that's what's going to happen, they will laugh. <laughs> um, okay. Let's get the fuck right. out of here. Yeah, coming up, Ness, Ness, Ness. coming up, Ness, we Ness. talk about the Nintendo yes. Entertainment System birds. nonstop. No, birds. we, we, birds, birds, no, we, fuck you, duck. No, we, 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 we talk about bird. wine in Docker and, um, you know, discords, they're, they're starting a store. It's available. You can buy stuff from, but not on Linux. Quack means no. And I guess it's time that we take a little break from, you know, the Steam news. And just before we get into the news, we have to thank all of yous. Yeah, that was bad. That was, that was really poos. bad. <laughs> that was poos, Pedro. Way to, way to screw it up. Well, you know, pa- Pedro aside, we, we got a lot of people we got to thank. Every, everyone yes. who's supporting this show, we literally could not do it without you. And we appreciate all the time, effort, and stuff you send our way. And if you want to be one of those cool, awesome people who we will eternally suck off, you can head over to linuxgamecast.com, click that support button, follow one of the many links, be it an affiliate link, or a PayPal link, or a Bitcoin link, and you can find find a number of ways to support us you can read i believe in you you can you can read the page and if you're a super cool person you can also head on over to patreon.com slash linux gamecast where 112 of you are giving us 251 schmeckles a freaking week <laughs> to come to you live five days a week with a whack of content like um tuesday tuesdays and thursday streams friday night trivia game of who where we talk about the new season of doctor who and then maybe if Game of Thrones comes out in the next 65 million years, we'll talk about that. Um, all, all, 2019, all this stuff. supposedly. 20, 29. Yeah, they, they say that. It's the year of the Linux desktop is when Game of Thrones season <laughs> yeah. whatever comes out. Um, but, you know, being, being a Patreon gets you some cool stuff. You get access to our Discord. You get early show note access. You get your name in the credits. You get access to our stuff a couple days early. And you can even play some video games with us on the aforementioned streams. But not the Tuesday stream. That's all Pedro all the time. 100% Pedro percentage. Sometimes yeah. when... Um, Sometimes when <laughs> AEIOU, sometimes why? Uh, we don't have anyone to thank this week, I don't think. No one. Um, I, I guess we got to give a, a shout out to uh, Frank's fuck buddies, though, don't we? Oh, man. All oh, the yes. beautiful party people. Oh, pff, great. I, I don't have. Uh, fine. Look, here's Frank. He's hey, being hey, awesome. Hey. I still. <laughs> man, Frank, listen, here's the thing. Frank really liked the fucking basement, man. I mean, every time it turned around, motherfuckers back down there. He's like, I want to come upstairs. I'm like, damn it, Frank. People want to see you. So we're working on getting him up there. I think he might come hang out on the wall of AMD processors because I'm an NVIDIA fanboy. And um, <laughs> stick around. Everybody's in the credits on that. Get your name in the credits. Uh, hey, if you like what we do and you like, uh, uh, what do you guys do like behind the scenes? I want to be a fly on the wall. We got a show just for you, man. As a patron, you get a custom RSS feed that you can throw into your podcatcher or you can just download it as it comes out tomorrow. It is our production meeting. That's where we talk about what's going on, what our plans are. And this week, Pedro spent a solid hour playing a video game. It was kind of fun. Uh, yes. Come check that business out. Uh, I enjoy that. And we've got the game of who, like Jordan said, all that fun stuff. Uh, we try to make it worthwhile. We try to dance for our dollars. But, oh, and double thanks to everybody shopping through our Amazon affiliate links and all the countries and stuff like that. Because that adds up, doesn't cost you a thing. You're going to buy the shit anyway. And special thanks to Pedro. I'm sure our UK check of 25 pounds was pretty much him when he yep. built that Steam box. That was like the uh, the Xbox, uh, the Steam Box 360, just getting that up and running. Yeah. <laughs> that was all through the affiliate link. <laughs> right we, 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 we are financial geniuses profiting off of this enterprise. Yes, sir. So let's, let's, let's get on board with the news. Docatrice, this is from uh, Phinesis Wine Build. Um, this is apparently the replacement for the Play on Linux Wine Build service. What it does is it uh, it's a Python script that will let you um, that will or ra- rather rather it's a Python library you can import into a Python script. Uh, which you can then use to build wine containers for uh, games. Um, there's uh, this. This is a bit of a wine hub thing, except with Docker. I have a minor nitpick about these instructions, though, because my God, they tell you to log out and log back into your account after creating the Docker group. People, I want to tell you about this command that's been around 
It's it's brand it's brand new. It's totally it totally wasn't invented in like 1970 when the whole Unix permission structure was conceived. It's called New Group, and it lets you assume a group that you created without having to log out and log back in. Especially for yeah. Docker, which, by the way, you shouldn't actually be running Docker. Uh, you shouldn't actually be running Docker as a non-root user. Uh, there's a number of reasons for that. I'm not going to get into it because it's not the freaking Wednesday show where they talk about this. Regardless, it's <laughs> available. You can ingest this. You can start building your wine game Docker containers and run them through Jython on Play on Linux if that is yeah. your jam. What I want to see, though, is uh, it's all well and good, I guess, uh, using Docker to build the the wines. It's all well and good, but I want to see them actually track the Proton Git and make that available in play on Linux. Since they're redesigning the uh, the wine build system, they can totally do that. It's a thing. Valve made the Git public, so yeah, just do that. Mm -hmm. All right. Up <laughs> Looks next, pretty neat. It's time to get it's time to get rotted. Hey man, let's talk about soft <laughs> body furries. I mean physics. <laughs> Wings of rods. It's, it's a foxy guy, man. It's it's not Mr. Fox Dog. It's hey, another man. fox guy. Check it's another Mohawk. fox guy. Yeah. It's thing. Well, he's got like that little chin thing at the bottom, kind of like Pedro does. If you haven't noticed, he cut that shit crooked. Look at it. Aww. Aww. <laughs> it's a thing. Uh, so this is a game that I've never been able to successfully get to compile. It is probably the first game that helped contribute to my deep-seated, long-standing hate of CMake. Um, but they got nightly builds now. You don't have to compile it, and I might actually go play around with it. You can head over to Itch and get that business. Uh, Pedro, tell the beautiful people what this game is. So uh, it's... A sandbox uh, soft body physics simulator. It, it It is a video game in the sense that you play it on a computer. But uh, yeah, that's about where it stops because it doesn't have a win state. Uh, it's really just what they do is they have a soft body physics simulation and you can take cars, planes, whatever other um, vehicles. Say Puff Marshmallow Man? Yeah. He has a really if soft body. Some, if some modder decides to put in the Stay Puff Marshmallow Man, you can just play as him as well. And uh, much like Ven, uh, I actually got it to build once. I drove a truck around a really oddly shaped track, and then, then I went over a bump, and my truck shot out into space. So I'm not entirely sure what was up in the physics in that version, but this was a long time ago. Chances are they probably fixed that now. But Wait, it's not supposed to do that? No, uh, this version, wh what they have is uh, a niche.io repo, and the way to access it is a, a little bit convoluted. You need to download the client, go to a specific um, URL in the client, and then use a very specific password to access the, uh, the current build. But supposedly, it works. That's kind of neat. Uh, I see Foxy's like, what's this different? Well, it's a, a it's a video game, man. B, um, Blender's Game Engine? Wah, wah. And, <laughs> and see, I think he's a little jealous of another Foxy dude. Oh, that's yeah. what it was. He's like, oh, this will not stand. Uh, multiplayer is also a thing with this. If you're looking yes. for, like, the elevator pitch to this, this is Gary's mod for, like, driving around and fucking shit up. Mm -hmm. That's what it is. And it's not completely dead. They were like, Eight people online playing right now. So, <laughs> well, uh, servers can take up to 64 people, so we may need to set something up. <laughs> it's thing. All right, let's yeah. get off grid. Yes, get off the grid with uh, a little bit of a Kickstarter. They have a demo, obviously, and um, you can download it from Itch as well. And it's uh, they're currently at 14,000. Uh, pounds out of the 20,000 gold. They have 303 backers with 18 days to go. So it may be something to look at. It's one of those games uh, that uh, you can just hack the environment. Hack the world! Hey, you can and, use SSH. That's the thing. Yeah. <laughs> and basically I looked at it just like, oh, so is it like Watch Dogs but with polygons? And No, no, no. They actually emphasize the uh, the hacking here since you don't... you're. You know, you're not some uh, shooty action person. You just have to go around, mess with the environment. It's like a stealth game, but with the hacking bits from... Uh, well, it, it, well it, it, is, it is it is 100% a stealth game. That's kind of the point, where yeah. you're supposed to, like, 
figure out ways to bypass things using social engineering or just hacking. The free demo is free. And hey, it's a Unity game that ships in a tarball. So I didn't mm -hmm. have to set an execute permission. So good on you, devs. It is a shame, though, that it crashes when I hit new game. <laughs> so... I didn't get a chance to play it, but man. You can listen for eight thousand pounds. You can be an executive producer. First off, you can get into that club at LGC for like ten bucks. Um, mm -hmm. But what else do you get? Uh, ethical hacker. You can, you get invited to join the devs at hacker at a, wait devs at hacker conference. Okay. Dev at, at hacker conference. Yes, comrade. You come. We take you in Venn. We go. We go to airport, and no, then we take you to you conference. No, you never take anything in Venn. <laughs> <laughs> yes, don't say his name in Venn. Hashtag you like dags. Um, <laughs> all right, we got to give this a mention uh, because hopefully it will come to Linux. But anything that lights right, a fire now. under Valve's ass is a good thing. Yes, yes it is, and Valve really does need a good fire lit under their ass, and uh, maybe Discord will be the ones to do it, but currently it's a um, international beta, that uh, or global beta as they call it, uh, that will uh, only work in Windows, and if you do decide to give this a try, if you're a filthy dual-booting heathen, you will have to agree to their new terms of service, and... Um, I had to read through those. I mean, they're pretty standard nowadays. It's just the, uh, yeah, you can't sue us clause. I'm not sure that's going to hold up there. Um, Wait, I, 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 I saw Android Boy Lovin' there. Mm -hmm. I need to, we, need to, we need to back up and examine this for a second. <laughs> There's a lot yeah, going on. It's this the is Discord like when our fellow store. kids meets deep fried memes. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, um, uh, I, I don't know. I... Yeah. But most 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 of the games here are uh, in is indie stuff that you already own. They have they have a couple interesting features though, where it will like attempt to scan your drives for um for games, and then you can just launch them through Discord, which could be nice, sort of like a impromptu lutris, as it were. Um, but yeah, it's available. It's Windows only, and. I don't, I don't know. Well, I guess, I guess we got to see uh, if more games are going to be showing up, some like bigger, bigger titles. Mm -hmm. that, would, that, um, that would that would be the test. The games that are available, even with your, your like Nitro, mm -hmm. better than I thought they were going to be. I mean, it's like, oh, those are games that you might actually want to sit down and play. Now, keep in mind, this is Discord. I'm like, Linux, maybe? These motherfuckers haven't figured out how to get spiel checking working the damn Linux client Sp yet. Splell checking? Splell clicking. Um, that's not a thing. Uh, so, but I, I wanted to mention this because I think knowing this, this is a Valve kind of like, hey, we need to have a chat system that's not mm -hmm. from 1999 and get their shit together, which they're trying to do because Discord is a legitimate fucking threat because all you need to be all you really need to be better than steam is not fucking much. I mean, mm -hmm. if you got the capacity, if you got the games, that was another thing I was kind of surprised to see was just, uh, the developers like, yeah, let's get on that. And then you kind of have like your little subscription service, you know, you can download mm -hmm. your blocks of games. They have like regular discord nitro. Then they have like a higher version of that. And I was like, well, shit discord. Are you listening? I would, cut you the damn check right now it's like all right <laughs> even though i own most of the games just to have that sitting there you know yeah mm -hmm. no it i am genuinely curious to see but you know relegating non-windows users to second class citizenship uh in 2018 that doesn't sit well with me so, so and here, here, here here's the other thing to keep in mind as well this this was a thing uh, Dan Olson was talking about when he was dissecting like the vidme dot stuff on uh, on mm -hmm. his YouTube channel, but f actually figuring out what the problems in Valve system are and then not creating just a carbon copy of what Valve does is kind of the key here. And mm -hmm. I'm not sure if Discord's going to fall into this trap. Time as as we said, time will tell. This is just the early days of it. Well, like out of but the gate, they're already doing it a little bit different. With hey man, if you get Nitro, you can do this, or you can buy games directly through us. Um, they also, Valve, when you mouse over a game, it shows you actual in-game play mm -hmm. yeah. for the thumbnail. Pfft. The hell are you not doing that? Oh, and you can browse their store without clicking, making a fucking thing of tea and coming back. Yeah, it doesn't take like 
10 seconds to right. load a yeah, game page? I mean, seriously, being in the business of selling games, you have the slowest goddamn marketplace, period. I can't think of anything slower than that that I regularly buy shit off of. Mm-hmm. And, then, and, and then in five years, we're going to be having this exact same complaint about Discord. Hey, Calling man, it. I look forward to it. Um, <laughs> stats right, uh, for nerds, uh, man. Yep. That's Ubuntu. thing. 1804 LTS. The numbers are in. They're out. However... I kind of want to bring this up for a couple of reasons, just to kind of get an idea because, you know, we understand everyone runs Arch, but, you know, there's still like five or six people that are running Ubuntu and their derivatives. We, uh, but they have a little thing when you install it and they're like, hey, would you like to send data to Canonical? And I'm like, fuck off. Uh, but 66% opted in. Real virtual machines uh, looks like most of them are physical couple of vms followed by fuck if we know uh they called it <laughs> unknown. like what the hell did you install it on <laughs> well I, I mean that that could be that could also be like a docker container or something 80 or... percent clean installs mm-hmm. that, that that's that sounds about right people have been burned too much with the upgrade process i don't know yeah. man i mean i i'm guessing it's clean installs people are like okay what all uh what do you mean i don't have a home directory anymore uh <laughs> you can find that out the hard way well, well, that 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 gets a little uh, illuminated later on in the thing. Um, a, bu- a bunch of users seems to be like where you would expect: South America, Africa, Australia has a mm-hmm. lot of them. Mm-hmm. Probably because Mr. Fox Dog is running around like installing a bunch of on people's computers, even though he's a Susie guy. <laughs> I got to throw in Scott does point out it could be uh, the Ubuntu on Windows Ten. This is also true. Yeah. Yes, huh. could be. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I was surprised to see on the map, it's like, oh, Portugal and Spain have more installs than the UK? Really? Well... Really? I I like the language is 5% for Portuguese, and considering Uh you're the only person I know who lives in the country from which English sprung that runs their operating system in Portuguese because you're assimilating so well, you account for the 5%. (laughs) <laughs> it's, 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 just, it's just all pedro pedro's just running around running a ubuntu on everything he can find toasters dead badgers whatever mm-hmm. uh, admittedly i have this and one of the laptops set in portuguese everything else is in english uk so yeah <laughs> uh, what i would like to see though is one right. of the things that's missing is um uh, like the breakdown by part names like this per uh, these many people have this part these many people have this laptop i would very very much like to see that because that, that requires be that requires running dmi decode right and that also requires running that as an elevated in elevated privileges i can see why people would be reluctant to do that yeah um and anyways uh desktop specs everyone is using x86 64 surprise surprise that two <laughs> percent is going to be like arm cpus and mm-hmm. like open risk um no nobody's using wayland <laughs> Of course, of course. You know, here's the thing. They're like display <laughs> server, ninety nine percent. To which I immediately thought, "That's like Wayland's making progress." Um, yeah. That was that was probably rounded down. Hmm. Yeah, there, 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 there are a couple of people still holding out using the Y display server. Let's see, U U F S versus BIOS. Yeah, physical versus. Yeah, bi- I use oh, BIOS yeah. because like, well, hang on, no, I use BIOS on the Dell boxes. Thanks, Mike. Um, <laughs> I use the Eufy's on the render box because it just fucking worked. I'm like, all right. Mm-hmm. Uh, d- d- the uh, the virtual machines, though, that's no surprise. No one wants to virtualize UEFI. <laughs> yeah. C- 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 BIO- <laughs> CBIOS works. If I need to spin up a KVM VM, it just does it. And I don't de- worry about it. Every- everyone's still using one screen. Everyone's still using only a single GPU. Something I, I thought about this. Oh, this, prob- this data is probably heavily skewed by laptops. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, yes. That, yes, that, it is. I mean, look toasters, at the thirteen sixty six by seven sixty eight resolution coming very close to ten eighty p. Yeah, that's laptops. That's all yeah. the laptops. <laughs> I'm. It's kind of weird, man. Well, even when you think about like high end laptops now, they're also going to be clocking in at thirty eight forty by twenty one sixty. Yes, it, it, the, it's ten, a crapshoot, ten, though. Yeah, ten 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 eighty p has finally unseated thirteen sixty six by seven sixty eight as like yeah the mm-hmm. standard. But there are still a couple uh, laptop manufacturers like no, you want the and the really cheap monitor because fuck yeah, you. the really cheap laptops still have thirteen sixty six by seven sixty eight. Uh, I am yeah. honestly like genuinely blown away. Like eight hundred eight by six, 
Now, this yeah. used to be called high res mode back in 94. Um, it, that's 11%. easily explained, though. That's okay. uh, virtual default machines. VM resolution. Mm. Yeah. For, for yeah. KVM, <laughs> yeah, 100%. Yep. Number of CPUs, um, uh, 1 to 3, 63, 4 to 6, and 7 plus. So that, Ryzen, that's 8%. CPUs, though, not threads. <laughs> Don't yeah. crush my <laughs> Dreams. Um, <laughs> people, people are still rocking those like AMD tricores from back in the day. Hey, Pedro, uh, not not Pedro. Jordan, you're part of the 32 percent with your RAM. I'm part of the two percent. 32 yeah. plus. 32 plus two percent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. Oh yeah. I feel, I feel great. I'm the 13 percent. I, I don't use Ubuntu, so I'm not. I'm not in this survey at all. Physical disk. Uh, man. Wow! Yeah. Oh, that's gigabytes. I was like, "What the fuck?" Okay, <laughs> yeah, and not then, to four ninety nine. Yeah, most people five hundred to S two terabytes, S and uh, yeah, yeah, two terabytes plus. And yeah. cheap laptops still have the five hundred gig, uh, fifty four hundred RPM hard drive. So yeah, <laughs> and the rest um, of this is mur, yeah. mur, 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 mur. I, oh, oh, I, 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 I did want to bring up the the reason you're saying like people fuck up their clean installs is because. The mid vast majority, I think a quarter of everyone using Ubuntu only has one partition. Mm. Yep. Just root everything. Right. <laughs> yeah. That's or definitely sorry, a thing. Uh, I don't know. I, I, I would like better breakdowns between like Intel and AMD CPUs, mainly yeah. because that would be a useful stat, Feral. Because Feral's like, <laughs> Intel's the only CPU ever, guys. We was like, oh. So I, I need to go online and look up what the AMD, the, the best-selling CPU of 2018, 2017. Uh, I got to go figure the out what 1600? <laughs> and yeah, it's, it's kind of annoying. I, I'd like that metric canonical. I know you got those digits, girlfriend. Give them to me. Yeah. And uh, one of the things that they could also do is have, like, the breakdown of the people installing the official flavors. It's completely useless information. I'm aware of this. But it would be interesting to see. And it would be very interesting to see the, like, the fanboy wars that shoot up on Reddit after that. <laughs> oh. oh, like, you, 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 can, you can get angry nerds to argue about shit by, like... Just by, by making offhand comments, yeah, it's it's not it's it's not that hard. It canonical. is not even C -c -c -canonical challenging. just needs to be like, we're resurrecting the mirror project. By the way, you guys. Anyway, people argue about anyway that period. Don't worry about it. But uh, that's why Kubuntu is better than Arch. So let's get out of here. All right, coming up next. We've been trying to do this for years, but then we got high and forgot. We're finally throwing chairs at Ultimate Chicken Horse. This is the Chairquisition. This is where we take your game. We take a look at it. We grade it on pass-fail scale for does it launch, performance, graphics, and control. And then we give it a score from one to four chairs based on whether or not we liked it and you stroked us off or paid us off. This week, we're taking a look at Ultimate Chicken Horse from Clever Endeavor Games built on Unity. You can pick it up for about 15 of your local currency. Uh, what is it? Ultimate Chicken Horse is a party platformer game where you build the level as you play, placing traps and hazards to screw your friends over, but trying not to screw yourself. This is one of those rare occasions where Mr. Fox Dog sent us some keys because he wanted people to play with. And yep. lo and behold, <laughs> we've taken a look at it two years later. So let's <laughs> kick this off on Ubuntu. How does it work? Hey, man, over here on the 1804. Whatever the hell it is this week, uh, Ryzen 1700 980. And this should run quite well. Kind of does. Kind of sort of. Comma, yes. Uh, it better, since you're kind of going to be restarting this game constantly, unfortunately. Seriously, uh, getting an online game going, I'm going to cover more on this. Uh, it's kind of a carp shoot, man. It's definitely a carp shoot. If you're looking for performance, you're looking at about 300 at 1080p, about 100, 120 at 3840 by 2160. The graphics, check it out. They work. They look good. They're flat. Cartoon. They're brilliant. I really dig the art style. The controls, this is kind of where shit gets a little dodgy, because when it works, it works. It works well. But I can't give it a pass on this simply because, you know, it's going to randomly eat shit sometimes, leaving you unable to control your awesome little character until the end of a round or restart, like I said. Uh, another biggie is the inability to launch the game with the keyboard and gerbil and then use the controller. That's not going to happen. But if you make Super serial, super sure to launch it with the controller. Make sure you don't touch your gerbil or your keyboard or player two is going to appear out of fucking nowhere. And there's not mm -hmm. much you can do about that. So 
Yeah, does it make with the working? It does launch. Multiplayer, not so much. And it kind of will just freeze up and disappear on you sometimes. And with the controls, man, it's been out for a long time. I want to give this game all the love. That's why we waited so long. It's like, come on, come on. But we got to do it. Um, yeah, I hate doing this, man. But, you know, I'm not going to fail you. But you get a solid, you know, two chairs. Well, F for effort. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, so much, much like them, that's, it's a lot of the same stuff on uh, Fedora 28, uh, with the i7-6700K and the GTX 1080 Ti. Uh, yeah, the game will start up, but every time you want to restart a multiplayer match, you have to quit the game and restart it, which is super annoying. Um, performance-wise, I mean, it performs fine, uh, with VSync on, and it's at 60 frames a second, and if you turn it off, then my 1080 Ti just crushes this thing, so there's really no <laughs> point in, uh, reporting performance on that. Uh, graphical-wise, yeah, look at that chicken dance. It, it, it definitely shows up. I, I like the character design in this. It's, it's a mix of cutesy and, like, just enough to, like, I don't know, make you rage. And controls, yeah, so th th this has been a problem since we started playing this game, where if you touch your mouse or keyboard before you actually uh, start before you hit the menu. That is your player one slot. I ran into another issue where if you just kind of nudge the mouse accidentally, it'll spawn a second cursor, even if you're using the controller in the slot one. And those will both be under control of the um, of the first player slot, which gets really annoying. Uh, we, uh, we we ended up uh, having to like mess up a match because Ven's like, what the hell are you doing? Oh, this other cursor it has control over my character. I was trying to get rid of it. Um, so yeah, I, I, again, like like Ven said, I don't want to. I don't want to give this a bad grade, but there's definitely a lot of technical issues with this game that you're going to have to deal with if you want to play. So it gets two chairs for me. Yeah, it launches reliably, which is an improvement from the early access days, but it still fails to, you know, join online games without a restart. Uh, and you're going to go through that a lot if you don't have friends over to play the game with you. The performance, it yeah, it's locked at 60 because VSync unlocking it, it seems to cap out at 300 frips, that's what it can do. Uh, the, yeah... Graphics and audio, they both work just fine. Controller support, which actually kind of surprised me, the 8-bit do NES controller, was recognized out of the box. It worked fine. And yes, so long as you don't touch the uh, the mouse or the keyboard, which after two years of playing this game, I know not to do. So I, I guess that's a learned thing. I'm not going to dig in a chair for that. But yeah, that does need to be fixed. So I'll give it three. <laughs> All right, well, let's score for Fedora, Solus, and Ubuntu. What about fun? Ben, did you have fun playing this game? Um, I like this game. I like this game. It's a fun game. It's a good fuck around game. It's great for an after show, even with like four people. We had fun playing it last night when we could get it working. Um, just out of the box, I'm just going to go ahead and tell you. I mean, I got to give this a reluctant two. Because you can technically make it work, and I'd love to give this a four. If this thing worked reliably, I could give it a solid four, but I can't because it just doesn't. Let's talk about the good things, though. When it is working, I mean, just the basic mechanic of building a nope gauntlet to kill your friends while you're simultaneously creating a path for yourself, that's so wicked fun. I mm -hmm. like it. I mean, it's really, really fun. But then again, it's really, really busted when you're spending so much time, I mean, like 20% of any chicken horsing session is going to be composed of like fucking around with controllers, restarting the game, randomly losing connection and trying to find a level that everyone can connect to. This was an issue in the recording that you might be watching right now. I got to keep saying that when it works, when everything clicks, it's a brilliant game. I like the idea of it. It's got a creative mode. It's got workshop levels and it's just good. However, um, if I said that the host client sync was incredibly buggy, I'd be accused of understating the actual facts. It is genuinely RNG whether or not you can connect. Now, normally, when we play this, we'll have somebody in Australia. Hi, Foxy, we love you. Or <laughs> people in the UK, Pedro, or Trugs. Or, uh, last night, we tried this on basic easy mode. Um, I'm on the East Coast of North America. Uh, Mr. Alert was on the west coast and jordan is up in toronto that, that that's an easy one continent 
type of thing. And it just wasn't having it. Now, at first, no, admittedly, we had one other player from Tanzania, just, <laughs> just right off the coast of North America. Um, <laughs> but even after he <laughs> dropped, after the game's like, fuck you. And he's like, I'm out, guys. We still had an issue getting in particular levels. Like we couldn't load the waterfall level, could we? No, no. Uh, I mean, it just wasn't happening. Yeah. So I we. Thought, had... I, th- I, th- I think that may have been because of the having to leave and restart the game, though. Well, we all had to do that, yeah. and it, it, that just needs to be fixed. And until it is, we're not the only one saying this. This is not like, oh, this is just an issue with Linux. Look at the reviews. I mean, everyone pretty much says the same thing which is true. It's a fun game. It's neat. Now, if you're going to play locally, if you got four controllers or just two controllers and you want to fuck around with friends, giggity, go for it. Have fun with it. But if you're picking this up with the intent to play it with somebody online, I can't, can't recommend that. That's me. Peace. Old man, Ben. Mm Hmm. Yeah, I mean, on, on paper, uh, Ultimate Chicken Horse is a fantastic game because the platforming is really good and the versus mechanic is inspired in how it makes people's brains just contort. It's like where you get these levels like no one can beat this. OK, now I got to start making this easy, but I don't want to make it too easy. But I'm not sure I have the ability to complete this jump. And I know Mr. Alert can because he's just way too good at video games. <laughs> um, but uh, in, 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 of course, it inspires a lot of good shit talk. And in practice, there are a lot of problems and they're all technical in nature. The control issue, the multiplayer connectivity issue, the cursor issue. And yeah, the, the, it, it just makes it, it stops you from actually starting playing the game, which is the best part of it. Um, but if you, if you can't get to that, then, you know, what's the point? I mean, there, the, la- the lack of single player is a bit of a uh, moot point. This is by design a party game. There's no, no one in their right mind would think, oh, I just want to play this on my own. It, there is a free play mode where you can sort of like craft levels. And if you want to like try and build a strategy of the stuff that you build or at least practice some jumps, you can. Yeah, look, look at that chicken fry. Um, <laughs> and the ability to create and share levels is nice and force people to go through that. But again, if you can't play the fucking game with your friends, and what's the point? It took four intoxicated people to sort out <laughs> online multiplayer. Um, uh, intoxicated technical people, yeah. Sober non-techies don't stand a chance, period. I'm going to give it two chairs. Yeah. No, my admiration for uh, Ben Yatsi Croshaw is news to no one watching this, but uh, you can never really fully agree with someone. Now, Yatsi Shtick is uh, a video game needs to be able to stand on its single-player campaign. I don't agree, and this is a really bad example because this game doesn't even pretend to have a single-player campaign. Uh, its, uh, Its job is to be a party game. Simple mechanics, easy to understand concepts, and a healthy dose of watching people fail. That's usually what gets people drinking at a party, and that's kind of what you want. Unfortunately, having to continuously debug a game when you have friends over is not what people want. Uh, this isn't early access anymore if the game is in an officially released state. Crap like being unable to reliably play it should be fixed. It's not fun when the game fails to deliver on the most basic thing that it sets out to do. So for me, it gets one chair. All right. Hmm. Well, I guess that's it for Ultimate Chicken Horse. Uh, uh, do we got? Yeah, do we got, yeah I got, I got uh, one thing I really want to point out is one of the reasons I think that we've waited so long to really put this game together. Is, am I wrong? We all kind of just assumed it was still in early access because of the issues. Yeah. 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 And, <laughs> and like the, the, the gameplay itself is super fun. But like I said, if you can't it, actually yeah. get to play the game, then it's a moot point. Mm-hmm. It, it's basic platforming uh, with all of none of the frills and all of the skills. You have to be very careful with where you place things in order to yeah. dick people over, but still be able to make it there yourself. It's a really awesome concept. It was just very poorly executed. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you, you saw you saw, in the in the previous uh, thing on the uh, menu sl- or on the level select, you saw my extra cursor. That was well, like, we're looking really at annoying. like one of the issues that we ran into last night. We were trying to get into the waterfall level. It just sit at loading screens, and I tried doing it. Then you tried hosting the game. Same shit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. That sucks. T- technical issues abound, but it's a really fun game, and I really, really hope that these guys can fix their shit because this game <laughs> deserves better. Yeah. Coming up. 
Next, Pedro talks about his favorite Brian Fargo directed franchise because that's not what anymore. he likes to do nonstop. Nonstop. It's yeah, it's about time we wrap this up. And as usual, the hate mail bids us farewell, but not before we tell you how to get in touch with us. You go to LilyScapeGuest.com. If you yeah, do it, you they do it. No, no. Uh, <laughs> do no, it. No. Yeah. If, if, no. if, if you do guess. I will com. come. <laughs> oh, I do it. Yep. Everyone wants to see that. So go to LukeScamecast.com. Make Jordan come by clicking the contact button and filling out the form. You can uh, ask Jordan. Yeah. You know, the person you just made come about relationship advice or well, uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll teach you how to make your special someone come. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> or I'll of course you can button. just. <laughs> Pick LGC Weekly to send us some hate mail for us to read right here, right now. Or, of course, if you're a game developer and you'd like to send us your game for us to play, just make sure to include three keys or, I don't know, just let us know that you've sent us three keys through the Steam Curator Connect. As long as we all get to play it, you're good. If not, we're going to mock you. Whoa, whoa, Pedro, forget the (laughs) second part. Ah, yes. Uh, If you are a game developer and you've put out your game on Linux, you can also let us know, and we will be more than happy to have you right here with us for a little while. (laughs) Not bad. Not bad. Needs more. All right. (laughs) Okay. So, uh, first up, or the only one up, is uh, Richard, and he's talking about Fallout 4. According to this video, there's a link in the show notes, this should work with getting Fallout 4 to work with Proton. Work, work, work. The user is using Ubuntu. Use... Okay. So that might make a difference. It doesn't. I got it working in Solus basically by doing the exact same thing. It's really annoying because uh, getting Fallout 4 to work, if you want audio, you need to use Wine Tricks or Proton Tricks to install Exact, and then you need to add two extra libraries uh, via um, Wine CFG, or. Well, or you don't play the game. Uh, you also need to enable the uh, virtual desktop. If you set it to your like full screen resolution, it will work because the mouse is broken if you have more than one monitor. Uh, in that, it won't. Uh, if you like move uh, where the cursor would go past Man, the board, right, of I, the I don't window. get to play around a lot with Bethesda uh, game, but dude, they, they just swap out shit with Skyrim for these things, don't they? It's yeah, the same, they, it's the same fucking game. So right. I mean, got it. Got it, it got is. It. Yeah, it's, the engine is Kyrim's engine, just like Fallout Three was using Oblivion's engine. Uh, but yeah, no, it's it's a pain in the ass to get uh, Fallout Four and Skyrim uh, Legendary Edition working uh, because you need those hacky workarounds with Proton still, which means you're going to be messing with stuff that you shouldn't be. But hey, it does work. Over here, it works just fine. I'm getting 60 FERPs at 4K on the 1080, so... <laughs> All right. Yep. Well, if, 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 if you want to drink irradiated Kool-Aid and get killed by scorpions... That's, I don't uh, know, man. That's uh, how you do it. Are there other ways, better ways, simpler ways to make this work? Uh, I'm sure. Yeah, Lutris, I'm sure. I'm sure Strider will steal this and like make it work in Lutris. <laughs> no, the, the Fallout Four already works in Lutris. It's been working in Lutris for a while. It's just if you don't want to set up Lutris, you can do it just with Steam and a healthy dose of wine tricks. But yeah, it's it's easier through Lutris. See, uh, what you some people are not gathering is part of this game. The game of it is getting it to work. I yeah. mean, this this is what we're seeing with Proton. It's confusing, poor Strider. He's like, put, 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 put. and if people can get, if people do Valve's job for them, then these games will just be whitelisted because Valve will go, oh, that's what we need to do, and they'll just enable that out of the box. So when you click install, it just does that automatically. And then you click play, and you don't have to have another program open. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and one, and, and one, once again, Valve is making you do the work that they would otherwise do for free. Better love story than Discord, man. Yeah. Hot, <laughs> sick, spicy tokes. And on that bombshell. How about 
We cue that music. You can always find our nonsense somewhere around 9.30 Eastern Standard Moon Time. It's kind of brilliant, a little bit terrifying, but we love you anyway. Come check us out. Um, Vince Stone, you can find me at Twitter, on Twitter, in Twitter, or Mastodon. We have one of those, mast.linuxgamecast.com. Put it in your face. I'm Jordan Spung. I've been drinking too much irradiated Kool-Aid, and my brain is in the process of melting right now. You can go watch that live at... The Burning Fool on <laughs> Twitter.com. Is, or you how, can go, is that how they watch you live? At, at that, 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 that's, that's how they do that. I, I, I post videos on Twitter of my Did brain you got that mad Periscope game going on now? <laughs> Absolute, absolutely. All right. All right. Uh, you, I mean, you can also follow me uh, at Frojo on our Mastodon. Yes, I am at uh, unaccounted for on Mastodon, or at unaccounted for. That's a different four. That's the number four on Mastodon and F O U R on Twitter. F F O R. Yeah. (laughs) No. (laughs) Uh, But yeah, no. You can find me there. Uh, I mostly just lurk around Mastodon. I'm still trying to figure out what the hell it is and how it works. But I think I'm coming to grips with it uh, it's a, it's a better it love story you know jordan <laughs> everyone i think everyone in our beautiful discord that is hanging out they've all followed me on mastodon not jordan <laughs> i thought i followed you no Tasty fuck, or whatever. Nope. Oh. well fuck you then uh-huh that's brilliant we're gonna roll some credits because <laughs> we love you how about that keep rolling 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 yeah I don't know. I, fo- I, th- I thought I followed like everyone on that list of people Mastodon gives you. Like these are the people who are following you. I don't know. If I, if I, if I have to hear, <laughs> want to hear what if I want to hear what Ben says, I can just you know throw a rubber ducky or a sausage at him, and he'll say something. <laughs> <laughs> now I want a rubber ducky made of sausage. Quit. Can, would would Ooh, you settle for a rubber, rubber ducky? ducky. Made, <laughs> would, would, you, would you settle for a ducky made out of salami? Possibly. <laughs> All right, I can, I need I can do that for you. I need a chorizo rubber ducky. <laughs> yeah, Mastodon, I mean, it is kind of like TweetDeck. I mean, it's frighteningly, it, it is uh, one of my tabs now. And I'm like, yeah, that does uh, look a lot like TweetDeck. Mm-hmm. I got I to gotta, I gotta, I gotta go find a list of funny people to follow on Mastodon so I can steal their content mercilessly. Man. Oh, yeah, that's what I meant to ask. Can you actually follow people on other nodes? Apparently yeah. you can. Oh, nice. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. You're awesome. We mean that. Except for Jordan. Steve- <laughs> no, I suck. At least I'm not a waifu like Steve's husband. <laughs> Steve is best waifu. <laughs> He's, he, 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 he should just change his name to Linux waifu. Steve Linux wife. It's fucked up that I'm the responsible one. Good night, everyone. Bye-bye. Five dudes.